this is just a quick trigger warning for this content. There will be mentions of sexual assault and dismemberment of body parts. So if that is upsetting to you, please click away from this video. Linda and Charlotte Mulhall would earn the title The Scissor Sisters for the horrific crime that took place on March the 20th, 2005. To give a bit of background on these two women, they both struggled with alcohol and drug issues throughout their life, as well as being witness to their mother's abuse from their father, John Mulhall. Kathleen Mulhall would explain how her husband, John Mulhall, was a violent man who beat her regularly, and these details would come to light during the case. Mr Justice Paul Kearney would say how Kathleen suffered quote, a lifetime of abuse from family and at the hands of men with whom she had had relationships. Therefore, Charlotte and Linda would grow up seeing this behaviour and Linda would eventually go on to have four children and fall into an abusive relationship with a lifelong criminal and thug called Wayne Kinsella. Charlotte would have issues with drug use and a history of petty convictions throughout her life. With that being said and the context and the background given, I will now talk about the case and the murder of Farah Swali Noor by Linda and Charlotte Mulhall. It is said that Kathleen Mulhall met Farah, a Kenyan refugee, in the early 2000s as her relationship with John Mulhall came to a close. It's said Farah Noor was also physically abusive and Kathleen reported how she would sell herself into prostitution to earn money for Noor at times during their relationship. Their relationship would be described as quote fraught and quote stormy and Noor is known to have sexually assaulted at least three women with one woman giving testimony during the trial. She also added that she feared at times he would kill her. A forensic psychologist Kira Staunton would state during the trial that Farah was, quote, a known violent sexual predator. On the day of the murder, so on March the 20th, 2005, the family, so Kathleen, Linda, Charlotte and Farah, had been out in Dublin. They were getting progressively drunk on vodka on the street and later on, by a peer, one of the sisters would produce a bag of ecstasy tablets and all three women, so Kathleen, Linda and Charlotte, would take these ecstasy tablets but Farah didn't as he became violent on drugs. Later, all three would return to Kathleen's flat in Richmond Road in Summerhill, Dublin, where they continued taking drugs and drinking. Linda would report the events of what happened that led to this horrendous crime. Linda states that she was sitting on a couch with Farah when he started to touch her in a sexual way and was refusing to let her go. He had also apparently whispered, we are Quote, quote, both creatures of the night while continuing to make sexual advances towards her. Charlotte and Kathleen would then notice this behaviour and start screaming at Farah to stop, but to no avail. Kathleen would then go on to ask the girls to, quote, kill him. It was then that Charlotte proceeded to slash Farah across the throat with a Stanley knife before Linda picked up a hammer and hit him on the head a number of times as he lay on the ground. Linda reports that Charlotte then would continue to stab the victim up to 20 times before dragging his lifeless body into the bathroom and dismembering his remains with a kitchen knife and hammer, including his head, limbs and penis. When the dismemberment was complete, the body parts were placed in a plastic bag and a sports bag before the girls boarded a bus with the victim's head in a shoulder bag to head to Timon North Park in Tala, South Dublin. CCTV would catch them eating breakfast rolls shortly afterwards with the victim's head still in a bag on Linda's shoulder. Linda reported that she would later move this to a different location. It was not until 10 days later when two men out walking along the canal in Ballybo encountered the most bizarre sighting. Floating in the canal they saw an arm, a leg and what appeared to be a torso and thigh. They had assumed it was a mannequin. It should be noted that the head was never recovered, but it is still thought to be in the location of Tim and Park. At first, the family tried to deny any involvement, but a few weeks later, Linda would confess. The forensic psychologist during the trial, Kira Staunton, would describe the family as, quote, one on the fringes of society where drugs and alcohol played a huge part in their lives. In the following weeks, after Linda and Charlotte's arrest, John Mulhall went to Dublin's Phoenix Park and hung himself and Kathleen Mulhall escaped to the UK. However, she was brought back to Ireland where she served five years for, quote, impeding the investigation. As of 2022, it is said that she still lives in the UK 
but has come over to visit her, da her daughter Charlotte in prison. As for Charlotte Mulhall, who was 37 at the time, she was sentenced to life in prison for the murder and Linda, who was 44 at the time, was handed a 15 year term for manslaughter. However, Linda was released in 2018 after having served 12 years of her sentence in Dublin's Mountjoy's Women's Prison. As of 2022, Charlotte could also be released from prison on temporary release for good behaviour. However, she has only served 16 years of her sentence. And for the first few years of her incarceration, there was claims that she was having intimate relations with staff there. As of 2023, Charlotte remains in prison while Linda presides in the UK. One of Linda's daughters would also make claims to the media in tribute to her mum, saying she took a, quote, dirty rapist off the streets. It is also notable that Kathleen Mulhall no longer talks to her daughter Linda, and the question which remains is whether Charlotte will get earlier release from her sentence. Thank you.